Good evening, guys. We have a winter storm coming our way. Um, it is Friday. Tomorrow during the day, I think it's supposed to reach like mid-50s. Um, by uh, Saturday evening, it's going to drop down to 18 degrees, and we are not going to go above freezing again until Wednesday, from what I can tell. Um, I've seen ten temperatures as low as 8 degrees with wind chills in the negatives. Um, I have already started my winter prepping. Um, I typically kind of start actually in October of every year, kind of getting things mildly ready. And as the winter progresses, I do more and more and more. So in this video, I'm going to walk around and kind of show you a little bit of the things I've done and some of the things that I still have to do in order to prep for this weather that's coming. Now this here is my breeder cage for my Catornix quail. As you can see, the front um, and ends and sides down here are completely covered in plastic. It is double layered. Um, that is to help some of the cold and wind from preventing to get in. Um, I do still have these doors open. We're supposed to get some sleet and some snow. Um, as we drop in temperature, I do have some pieces of cardboard actually that I'm going to put up here just temporarily and they won't cover the whole entire door, but they will cover a portion of the door. Um, but that is just a very temporary solution. We're not going to stay cold for very long. Um, but that is the only thing I could come up with without having to do too, too much. I don't want to cover it in plastic because, like I said, this is not long term. Um, it is going to be in the 30s and 40s thereafter. But they will be okay in the 30s and 40s. It's down in those single digits that I kind of worry about them. And I want them to stay warm enough that their egg production doesn't drop and that nobody freezes to death in the middle of the night. Um, I do have five gallon buckets on the top for water. Um, I've temporarily put this piece of tin up here. Um, that is to kind of keep uh, make a little bit of an overhang to keep the sleet and the snow from when it melts from running down into the cage. My five gallon buckets though, I will fill those completely full and try to keep them full. The fuller that bucket is, the longer it takes it to freeze. Um, but I have backup waterers, just those little uh, quart sized waterers that I can put into these cages as needed. And I have more than plenty of them. As one freezes, then I can take it out and put a fresh one in. Um, I do not have those buckets insulated or my PVC pipe insulated on this cage. I need to at some point, but I did not get around to doing that this year. Um, so the quart sized waterers will have to work to just keep water to them for the time being. Now my rabbits live strictly outside summer and winter. I am least worried about the rabbits. Out of everything that I own, my rabbits handle winter very, very, very well. Um, some of them have some hay and straw and stuff in their cages. I need to take all of that out and put fresh in there. Some of it is soiled. Um, they've spread it all around instead of having it just in one corner or in the back. But I will clean all of that out. I will empty their trays. Um, most of their trays are fairly clean right now, but I will get them all emptied and that away in those really, really cold temperatures. I don't have to clean trays because they're over full. Um, keeps you from having to do so many chores in that very, very cold weather. Now for their waterers, um, I do have your regular rabbit waterers. Like this one up here, I have several of those. I have a whole entire uh, bin full of those. So as these waterers here freeze, I will bring out... Um, those spare waterers to be able to put on their cage to make sure that they're still getting water. Um, as you can see, these are not insulated as well. We don't have a huge problem here in Texas with extremely cold below freezing temperatures. We do get below freezing a lot, but not for very long periods of time. So it's just something that happens for two or three days, maybe even a week, and then we get back up again, and then the temperatures may drop. So that is how I handle this particular situation. So we've got hay and straw on deck ready to go into these cages. This evening here I've got to clean these out or even tomorrow clean these out and get fresh in there. Um, that way they'll have plenty of hay to eat, plenty of straw to keep warm with. I'll make sure that their food bowls stay completely full so they've got plenty of food to eat and help keep their little selves warm. Um, it's hard to stay warm when you're hungry so keep those food bowls full. Um, that way they can go to sleep with a full stomach and stay nice and warm. My garden beds over here have layers and layers and layers of hay and pine shavings and stuff that I've been throwing in there um, since the end of summer. Um, I have a lot of herbs planted in this, so I have them kind of buried and protected. Um, most of them tend to still come up at the beginning of spring usually, 
some of them don't because I bury them a little too much. Um, it's a way to put all my compost straight into my garden. Like my rabbit is really what goes in here. Um, and just let it break down on its own. Fertilize the ground and all of that bedding kind of protects those herbs from the, uh, from the roots freezing really. Now my ducks are pretty hardy. Um, they tend to take the cold very very well i need to change the straw out inside of their thing we've had rain over the last several days so their ground is very very wet i'll more than likely pull that straw out put this all over the ground to kind of uh, cover up all that wetness and give them fresh warm straw to be able to bed down in in the middle of the night but they've got a nice little shelter here that will protect them from the elements um, for their water this is a Kind of a plastic type tub if it starts to freeze it's very very easy to just dump the ice out and refill it so that one there i'm not too worried about all right and for my big girls i've got to clean these waters this evening we had a lot of rain and even hail last night so it splashed up a lot of dirt and got the waters dirty um, i didn't have time to change them all out this morning but i had to try to rinse out the base as much as i could and as you can see they've got dirt in there off their beaks all day long um, these waters here can be very very hard to keep them from freezing um, Honestly, what I do is every night I'll fill these up and I actually take them inside my garage. Chickens are asleep at night, so there's no need for them to sit outside all night and just freeze. And then I'll bring them back out in the morning. Um, out here on my main yard, I have two three and a half gallon waters and a five gallon water. So I'll take those in at the end of the evening and bring them back at, um, in the morning time. That way their water is nice and unfrozen. And then throughout the day, we'll kind of check on it and see how it's going now for water for them as well i also use one of these rubber uh trough type thingies i'll fill that up this plastic bottle in here once i've got it filled up i will put this in there that will move around as the wind blows and all of that and that helps keep that water from freezing so quickly um when you're down in the negatives this here can still freeze but this being rubber will you're able to easily dump that frozen water out where with these here these are plastic they're a hard plastic and when they are frozen you've got to be very very careful because you can break those things so this here will be their primary source of water um, i will also empty this at the end of the day there's no need for it to set out here and then me fight with getting the ice out of it in the morning but it does come out pretty easy like i said it's bendable it's rubber it's flexible so fill that up and i'll have this bottle floating in there for them to be able to have uh, fresh water just in case throughout the day if i'm gone to work or something like that in these freeze then they do have this here as an option now this here is my little bantam house um, as you can see the chicken wire is pretty open and exposed to the elements now they do merge with my big flock during the day so they only sleep in here um, yesterday evening i filled it full of straw and you can see they've reeked it all around but i'll fluff it all back up for them and make sure that they're ready to go um, Saturday evening when that cold front rolls in on us. This is a spare quail cage where I kind of put some of my quail that are getting just a tad bit older. Um, so these are, most of these are close to a year, if not a little over a year. Um, quail do not live, but about a year and a half, maybe even up to two years sometimes. So I don't expect any of these to live for very much longer anyway, but I still don't want them to die uh, freeze to death that is a miserable way to die um, tomorrow i am going to cover this portion here in that same plastic that my breeder cages up there are covered in and i will cover this door this little section over here i will leave open and i'm going to put some straw in here just on one end they poop so so much but give them just a little bit of bedding to be able to snuggle down in and leave that other end open hopefully which I know they are not the smart, but my hopes is, is that when they come down here to drink and then eat on this end, that they will poop and then only sleep on this end. But we all know that is not going to happen. These quail are not that smart. Now my big girls in their hen house, and even though it does not look like it at all, I just put fresh straw down less than a week ago. I put a whole entire bell into here. So tomorrow, um, before everything starts uh, the cold front rolls in I will come in here with a rake kind of spread it all around even it out get it all fluffed up because we've got some bare spots on the ground where they've been scratching and all of that um, I've moved one of their feed pans in already um, because we had some rain and hail and all of that that way they could have a, a food bowl to eat out of the rain and all of that good stuff um, I do not keep water inside my hen house and the reason for that the water causes humidity the humidity causes moisture 
that moisture can cause frostbite on their wattles, combs, and even their feet. So I keep the water completely out of the um, out of the actual coop. Um, they will stay warm enough just with their body heat. Once uh, once they all go to bed, I shut the doors securely, and their body heat will keep this thing usually about 20 to 30 degrees warmer than it is outside even. My big girls, they do not get any source of actual heat. No heat lamps, no heaters, no anything um, in the wintertime. Chickens tolerate cold very, very well. Um, they can tolerate cold way down into the negatives. Um, so they are, they're pretty good. Um, their main thing that they need is some bedding, dry area, and wind block, um, which this here is a, a, a coop that has, you know, three sides plus the front doors. Um, they get plenty of wind block and they will be just fine with no heat. Heaters in your coop can be way more dangerous than, than helpful. Um, that what they do is they'll warm up and then when they come out into the cold, they end up getting frostbite. It can cause some breathing problems from it being warm and then going out into the cold. Um, and then besides that, they are just dangerous. Um, if they fall or something like that, your hay, your straw, your pine shavings, your leaves, whatever it is that you're using for bedding can catch on fire and go up in flames in a matter of seconds. I've also got bedding on hand for if we end up getting snow like they are predicting, that I can put some bedding down um, outside the door and give them some dry areas to kind of walk around. My chickens tend to typically really not um, be phased by the snow and the ice too much. They all still come out. They don't stay out as long as what they usually do, but they do go back and forth. Um, but the, the snow and the ice does not prevent them from coming out. They actually seem like they enjoy it quite a bit. All right, now we've got another coop up here. This is actually some Malaysian or American Saramas actually. Um, I need to cover their coop just a little bit better. I'm going to put plastic right here over this end and plastic right down here. I will leave the door open for air um, and light and all of that good stuff. We do have two broody mamas up here. Layla's opening it up for us. We have two broody mamas which are actually off of their nest right now. Hopefully they have not been off of their nest for very, very long. Um, they had some babies. I took their babies away um, yesterday. Um, they had hatched three. One had already actually died. Um, Saramas are very, very tiny when they're born, um, and they're a very expensive chicken. The mamas do great with keeping them warm, but what had happened um, is a, a video that I had made earlier this week. I had worried about with it being very, very cold. Usually what happens when they take them down this ramp, for whatever reason, the babies are hardly ever able to get back up, and that is exactly what happened. One of the babies was not able to get back up. It has been very, very cold and very windy lately, and I would just kind of assume that the baby died from being too cold and and the mama couldn't get it back up the ramp because they were both up there in their little nest with their other babies and this one was down here on the ground dead as a doornail unfortunately so i still got a little bit that i need to do to get the animals ready but overall i'm pretty good i've picked up the majority of the yard i tend to kind of lay some stuff down like a pair of pliers that i use to cut the wire off hay and stuff like that um, i've picked all of that stuff up because you don't want those pliers that you use to cut that wire off your hay to be laying somewhere and then you're getting snow and ice and all of that and now your pliers are buried or whatever it may be maybe your bucket that you use all the time and all of that so i've went around the yard and i've picked up all of that stuff um, anything that could be caught by the wind and blow around everything is picked up and put away now for me for me to get ready for winter my house is actually all electric with no fireplace and Layla wants to say hi back here hi <laughs> my house is all electric no fireplace at all um, so if we lose power two years ago we actually lost power and we were without power for 60 hours straight um, it got brutally cold in my house down to 36 degrees actually um, I've got some fairly new windows in my house they've only been there seven maybe eight years ago i had them put in um, and they do really really well since i changed those windows out i've noticed a huge um re reduction in my energy bill and um it state the temperature holds we actually have not turned our heater on at all this whole entire winter the coldest it's gotten in the house is about 65 degrees so this is the one time of the year that um if you can tolerate just a little bit of cold um you can save money on that electric bill. Um, I grew up in a house with no central heat, no central air, um, so it doesn't bother me one single bit to not have that heater on, and my kids are actually very used to it. So since my house is all electric, what that means if we lose power is that we have no 
cook cooking in the house basically um, that is perfectly fine um, I have a whole entire shack here full of wood I have cut all of this wood me and my son actually have cut it um, most of it with an axe we pick it up off the side of the road so that's why you kind of see where it's been cut with chainsaws and we do mo most of the splitting if necessary um, with an axe um, and little Layla here um, she cuts wood with an axe as well so she does very very well these kids they can do this stuff guys um, it's good for your kids to learn stuff like that you just have to keep an eye on them with an axe um, but the more they use it the better they'll get with it so i've actually got an in-ground fire pit out here um, tomorrow i'm going to cover or clean that fire pit out so i've got a lot on my list to do tomorrow if you haven't noticed i got to cover the sarama house up there i've got to cover the quail house up there i've got to you know fluff up the hay clean out the rabbit things i've got a lot that i still need to get done but all that's just kind of last minute stuff um but i've got my in-ground fire pit once i get it all cleaned out i've got trivets i've got every cast iron skillet out there that you can possibly think of i love cooking out of cast iron and if we lose power outside is where i will be cooking um, that is what i have done in the past and I really, really like it. Um, starting that fire, cooking outside. Our freezers are completely full, so we don't need to run to the grocery store. We don't buy meat at the store. Um, I've recently butchered all my meat chickens. Um, I've butchered a lot of quail. My son got three deer. Um, we've got some beef in there. We've got some pork in there. We've even got turkey in there that we've butchered. So all that, the freezers, we have three freezers full of meat, so meat is not a concern. Um, we have some vegetables on hand, and we have water um, in some some uh, gallon jugs that we have filled up um, another thing that I do need to do tomorrow is fill up some empty five gallon buckets put them in the garage for my animals water if the water if it freezes so bad in my my water hose freezes or my pipes freeze and I can't get my water hose connected at least I will have some water on hand to be able to provide to my animals um, it may not be enough because I have quite a few waters around here I counted this morning I think and I have like 20 two or 23 waters just outside alone um, so it's a lot of waters to manage and a lot of waters to fill up so um, I've got five or six uh, extra five gallon buckets that I plan to fill up though and just kind of have just a little bit of water um, hopefully that doesn't happen and I don't need it but just in case you never can be too safe fortunately I am off the majority of this cold spell I will be off until Tuesday um, and that's if the roads are good if the roads aren't good then I won't be going to work Tuesday so I'll be able to be here I plan to gather eggs throughout the day that way my eggs don't freeze and all of that and all of this stuff guys this is totally optional um, if you're doing something and it works for you by all means do it I'm not saying do it my way I'm just telling you in this video what I'm doing to prep for the winter um, if you have any suggestions of stuff that I haven't named or maybe I forgot it um, please leave those in the comments and I will be open to uh, seeing what other people are doing and maybe it's something like I said that I'm already doing and just hadn't mentioned in this video or maybe something that I have completely not even thought of yet now as some of you may know um, I brewed a lot of chicks quail ducks all of that good stuff um, I actually brewed in my garage in the winter time um, but I have some backups in here just in case we lose power and I'll show you that first I want to show you that right now it is currently 61 degrees in my garage and I do have the door slightly open not all the way um, that keeps the wind from blowing in so much but I have that door open just a little bit and we are sitting at 61 degrees when that door closes it kind of depends on the temperature outside but a lot of times it stays between 60 to 75 degrees or so in here so it stays pretty warm just naturally in here that keeps these baby little duckies like this one here pretty warm but just in case we have a gas heater a propane heater that we can actually hook up in here I have just your regular 20 pound tank right down there that is almost completely full then I have this uh, 100 pound tank over here this is what I use for kind of just in case of emergency I really do not like to tap into this unless the electric actually goes out because when the electric goes out what that means is these heat lamps go down um, I have some babies in there that are uh, just less than 24 hours old right now so I got to be able to keep them warm um, tomorrow another thing that I need to do this is a heater up here I need to get that down I need to dust it off and I need to hook the uh, line up to the propane tank and test it make sure that it comes on every once in a while from setting up there um, all summer long it gets kind of dusty and doesn't want to start so I've got to get that down and get that going just to make sure in case I do lose power it is better to be prepared than under prepared 
And then one of the last things that I do, this right here is a solar phone charger. So I just pulled this out today. Um, Zoe's Homestead, I watched a video, I follow him all the time and I love his videos. Um, he made me think about that phone charger. Um, he had mentioned a solar light that he had out that he had taken to uh, get it charged up. And I was like, holy crap. Um, thank you, Zoe. I have not taken out my solar phone charger because if you lose power, you cannot charge your phone except for maybe in your car. And I don't want to sit there and run my gas down um, just to charge my phone. But check out Zoe's video. I'm going to link his video in the comments. That way you can easily find it. Um, he had some very, very good points in there. He's doing a lot of the things that I'm doing and then some things differently. And that is all great. Um, he also mentioned in his video, and I love it. I say that all, a lot in my videos, actually. Um, take what you can from a video and do what works for you you don't have to do everything that i'm doing you don't have to do everything he's doing and you don't have to do everything that the other person's doing there are some things in some people's video that will work for your lifestyle your flocks your family and all of that and some of it won't um, learn what you can and leave the rest behind everyone's situation is a little different everybody's climate is a little different um, some people have already been in freezing temperatures for a month or more now um, some people may not ever even see freezing temperatures some people have mild, milder winters um, so everything i'm doing may not work for you and that is perfectly fine but i'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up i have got a ton of chores to do i've got a list that i need to sit down and make for tomorrow um, to make sure that i do not forget anything off my list um, for my prep and thank y'all for watching this video hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully i taught you something and like i said leave some things in the comments that you're doing um, i'm very eager to see what it is that you're doing that maybe i'm not doing like i said some things i may not have thought of um, so help me learn as well um, thank y'all for watching and y'all have a good evening stay warm guys